So we're here at Photokina 2018 at the Camera Rescue booth with Paul from Analog Wonderland, as the t-shirt says. <laughs> um, Paul started an um, online film store, uh, so not physically based anywhere you can walk in. Mm -hmm. uh, five months ago, which is very recently, I had heard of you guys. And I think a lot of people will hear from you guys in the future. You're doing a great uh, marketing you. and yeah. stuff like that. So tell me, Paul, exactly how did it start, what you guys do? Yeah, of course. No, um, first of all, thanks so much for, uh, for having me on here. It's a pleasure. I think for me, I mean, I've been shooting film for 10 years, 15 years now. And um, what I felt for a while is that it's tough to get hold of all the films that you want. And it was manageable for a bit because you sort of fall into these, uh, not quite ruts, but, you know, the, the habit of, you know, just using Velvia or just using um, uh, HP5. And, that, and that's OK. And also, I was living in London where we were lucky to have a few local shops that sold film, but then when I moved away to Yorkshire, I really felt the fact that there was no way that you could walk in and buy film at a reasonable price or reasonable availability. Or different on, films, I guess. Or different, yeah, well, exactly. And then you actually go online, and then you suddenly realize there's a load of films out there, but from different places, so you have to go directly to Double to buy some of their films. You have to go directly to Revelog. And pay shipping for every single little one. Shipping, yeah, and so if you want to try out three or four different films, you have to go to three or four different places, pay the shipping, or or travel around Europe, uh, you know, visiting physically, which didn't quite make sense either. Um, so that was sort of the one background. The second one was last year, 2017, was the, the, the highest number of new film launches in the industry since the 90s. And uh, let me quote new, because some are, you know, they're, uh, how would you say it? They're special effect films. They're not exactly yes. a new emotion, because I consider new a new emotion. Yes. Like Actochrome is a new emotion. I understand new films, but they're they're using a current stock, just yes. to be specific. But it's interesting. There's a lot of new things too that have, were not made to the public, like a street candy, that are now put into film for us to shoot. So sorry for that. No, no, no. You're absolutely right because um, and a lot of our customers make the same distinction. That's totally fair. Yeah, you're right. There are there are emulsions that are pre-exposed or manipulated and rebranded. There are emulsions that are frankly repackaged and rebranded. Um, but I don't see that. I, I think it's important to then know when what is new and what is not, and that's fair. But I don't see any of that as a bad thing. No, no, no bad. Because if you look at if you look at the work that's been done on some of the film brands that are new brands but older emulsions, the marketing, the design, the look. If someone picks up a film because it looks cool and you use it, I mean, and I always use the Cosmic Photo Mono as an example. Like Stephen's very open about the fact that he's repurposing film, but. It's a film stock that people don't really know about, and he's making it look so cool. He's made it exciting. It's, yeah, it is. So if more people are buying film because Steven's made it exciting, for me, I'm like, that's brilliant. And you know what? If you're, a, if you're somebody who knows all about film and always buying film, you won't be interested, and that's also cool. But there's a load of good point new film products coming out, and then 2018 by May had already beaten that record. So we now have Ectochrome as of two days ago. Um, well, Ectochrome and shipping to us. Not quite ready to, to buy as of today, but in the next week or two. Well, oh, by the time the video is out, it'll be in your store. Oh, in which so case, yes, worry. definitely buy it now today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, um, uh, but you also see then uh, the 3200 coming back, and you see basically a lot of the big companies that went through the really tough times, Kodak, uh, Fuji, Ilford, they all they all went through a painful contraction. Um, but we're now at an interesting point where they're coming back out of it. So Kodak, yeah, we, we've now, done the turning point, and now it's starting to go. Yeah, like Kodak went bust, but you now have Kodak Alaris, who are a much smaller tight organization, who can now start to grow from a, like a new base, if that makes sense. Ilford are the same. Um, so they're starting to really come through and interact a lot better with the community. And then you have Steven, you have Vincent, you have um, the Revelog guys. Everyone around it is using new technologies. That's the other cool thing, the digital revolution. Help film. Analog. No, that, to me, it's the internet saved film photography. I mean, yeah. it, it, because I live in Bilbao, Spain, <laughs> uh, and there's no one around me that I would have met if it wouldn't have been for the internet. Forums, Instagram. So those things save the fact that now we're a community. I, I mean, we're here with Finnish uh, colleagues. You're from England. Yeah, yeah. Jordan's the cameraman and helping us with audio. He's from the States. And all that happened thanks to the internet. It did decrease the digital, but it also helped us create a community, which is what I like. No, and it makes me laugh. Every time you, I'm posting a film photo on Instagram, I'm thinking, <laughs> this is so crazy that this is the thing. But it is a thing. And 
And when you look at what Revolog, what uh, Double, what Kono have been able to do, what Yodica are able to do, it's because digital techniques make it accessible. So it's not just the community, which is a huge part of it, and sharing. It's also with producing analog films for use analog cameras with digital world. The other one that is um, a great example is 3D printing. So the, the large format cameras, Chroma, Camera Dactyl, have you seen Camera Dactyl? Yep. Crazy. A looks. standard camera, which is a monorail that's yeah. very small, very easy. No, yeah. I know, I know. All, all possible because of digital technology breakthroughs. So you, we've been through this painful contraction, and now it feels like we're coming back to the other end. And what, what we're then trying to do is we're saying, well, we need to make film photography fun and accessible for everyone. Because the people who have been there throughout, that's great, but there's people today who, you know, someone who's 21 years old today will never have seen a film camera used at home, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because by the time they grew up, it was digital cameras and then iPhones. Um, or even people who have spent 20 years going to DSLR, using iPhones, and then refinding their camera in their cupboard, you know. These people need to be brought back into the community in an easy, accessible way. And for us, I think we see our role as being saying, you know what, there's over 180 films you can buy today from us. By the end of the year, that'll be over 200. That's amazing. Oh, it is amazing. Um, and, it's, and it's for everyone. There's, you have the, the large format, you have Velvia, you have HP5, but then you also have Yodica, Revlog, etc. So someone can come to the shop and buy whatever film they like and whatever combination they like. And what we see is a lot of people, like... Like testing things oh, out. Oh, yeah. The number of orders we've had with only one film stock is like probably less than 10 since we launched. Because when you're there, and the delivery cost is just one cost, right? So when you're there, why not stock up? And if you buy more, the delivery cost goes down. We have loyalty points as well. So to encourage people just to, to buy from us, because hopefully, as you can see from, from what we're doing in our marketing, we, I'm a film photographer first and foremost. <laughs> I think we all, yeah. Yeah, I'm exactly. Uh, you know, someone... That's something that's changed, and that is now the community and the businesses are run more by photographers that enjoy than just being a business. Like, I'm going to work, but I don't like this, but I do it for, to pay the bills. Now we're doing this, and if it pays the bills, it's a big bonus, but a lot of people are starting things out of passion. I mean, we had uh, Sam from Solar Can. Yeah. Like, those things are the things that have changed a lot because it's passion driven, and of course we all need a business part of it, but it's a lot of like, I'm a film photographer, what do I need, what do I want, what do I expect? what I think is missing, and that's important. Oh, for sure, and, and then everyone brings their own skills um, to it as well. So, so people are finding the niches, and, and, and what, what Adam, what Sam do, I could then, like, or, or Lomi, film washi, like, that guy creates magic in his garage. Like, have you seen his infrared goggles that he built himself? I I've, mean, I've, I've seen him wearing them, but I haven't <laughs> it, been. It's metal, so he's built infrared goggles to help him make film in the dark because he couldn't buy any because the military won't let him. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I could never do that. But I'm very grateful he is because then he's, you know, hand coating uh, emulsions onto Japanese paper. Oh, yeah. um, and then I have a, a business background um, and hopefully what I can offer and I enjoy it is then the selling the marketing and making sure it's accessible and cheap and um, with everyone. So you're right, people are bringing their, their skills from their day jobs or their, their other interests with the passion of film photography and then working together in a way that I don't think it would, it would have operated in the past because it was such a big business. Um, so we've sort of, I hate to phrase, but you know, right-sized the industry it feels like now. But now it's then back in growth, significant growth. Yeah, and now that's when I think all those smaller things that happened have made the big players turn their heads, Kodak, you know, hopefully Fuji, uh, <laughs> things like that that have turned their heads and like, okay, I think there are all these small companies doing interesting things are doing well, like Cinestill Film. I mean, that started as a venture that the first um, few that we, they made, they sold out and they couldn't keep up with, uh, with the demand. And now they're here the second time, they're, at least that I know they're in, um, in Photokina, growing with new products. They have the new little boiler for film processing yeah. at home. And that has made big guys turn around. And that's important. Like now we're seeing some support from the bigger players and it benefits everyone. Absolutely, and, and I mean, the other thing is everyone benefits. Now, of course, you have competition, you know, but we all know that, uh, and Ian, we've experienced it ourselves, if you buy one film, it doesn't stop you buying other films. And in fact, the more you try, the more likely you are to just buy more and use more and enjoy more. And because of the, when you go back to the supply side, only a few factors can go to emulsions. 
the more people who are using those factories, the better the business will be because the costs come down, you see efficiencies. Um, and that's really exciting as well. And I think that's where the big guys are seeing the benefit. Because not only are people then helping remarket the industry, but they're also adding to the volume of film that people are using and that, that's coming through. Now, I think the thing that's, I don't know if I, I feel then the thing that's missing at the moment is then cameras, new cameras. Uh, which we had um, Lawrence from Reflex yesterday oh, here. Oh, fantastic. There we so go. So that was great. Yeah, we yeah. had uh, Gary from Mint making, yes. you know, the rangefinder for Instax uh, wide. So hopefully, yeah, that's something I'm very much missing. I actually know someone in Geneva that builds cameras, ah. which I'll get you in contact. Oh, please do. Uh, because he's a great guy, very young. He's friends of Camera Rescue, Oscar Owison from oh, Phenomicon. Fantastic. He's made like an X-Band 3D printed, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, I think that is something missing. I also feel like the processing part of film between, even though Cinestill just launched and Jobo and people mm. like that are still there, there's space for more. Um, but yeah, uh, anything else we should expect from Analog Wonderland? Uh, you said that you're increasing film stocks. Anything down the line that you're excited about? So the things at the moment is, yes, we've got um, uh, Ectochrome launches is, is top of mind at the moment and then also preparing for Christmas and we're going to create a few different Christmas products. We've also just launched our clothing range um, because one of the things that, again, personally I found was um, that it was hard to get told of uh, sort of well-designed, well-made, analog-inspired uh, t-shirts. And we worked with the designer in California for the last two months. So there's a range of men's and women's t-shirts. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to do things like this. Basically, because the good thing is our customers are very vocal um, uh, in, in what they would like, in what they want to see, in what they are missing. And what, what they, they don't need. like. Well, they are also the, the vocal internet, there. So. <laughs> and we, we do not mind that at all. Uh, all feedback is, uh, is good. And, um, and so we're very much guided by what people want. So. Uh, when we launched, we had a small selection of 4x5 film. Mm -hmm. That's expanded because people have said, we want more. We want more. Um, people are constantly pushing us to look at the new accessories, new things that are helpful, uh, and clothing is, is a huge aspect. So what you'll see from us is, is very much remaining focused on making sure that film probably is fun, accessible for everyone through the stocks and the products they can buy, as cheap and as easy as possible but then we will expand where it makes sense. And of course we ship, we're based in the UK, we ship to the, in the UK, but we can also ship across Europe, uh, Americas, North America, sorry, um, and Australia, New Zealand as well, where we've, that's come again from customer requests where people have been, and when we had it exactly at a certain level, and often it is those smaller films, Cinestill or Washi or Double that people are not able to walk and find. So we will we'll expand as appropriate, but frankly, as our customers, I mean, it's five, five months, so you guys have done a lot in five months. We're talking people like we're years into that. Okay. This is true. So, Paul, thank you so much for having us. Good luck with everything you're doing. Thank you so um, much. I will be checking out what you guys do um, more often. I'll save you on the favorites for my news. Oh, that's very kind. And, uh, yeah, have a great fair, and thank you. Thanks so much.